What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna kick both my lockers on and I'm gonna bury this thing down to the frame rails. I'm only slightly looking forward to doing this because it's gonna be a ton of work to shovel this thing out. Hey guys, Tyler with Independence Overland. So I'm out here near the whitewashed sand dunes today and I'm going to be doing a comparison between some different traction boards. Vic Offroad asked me if I would use some of the traction boards to do a video kind of like what I'd done before where I'm using them to get out of the sand. I was actually interested in doing it because they offered to let me compare it to the best that there is. I've owned the Max Tracks for about three years now. I've used them to get out of all sorts of stuff. My bottom lugs here are pretty much gone, especially on the bottom side. So these Max Tracks are handicapped. Vic Offroad sells all sorts of different traction boards. These are two different models. I'll put links in because I don't remember the exact model. Uh, there's only one on the website that's black and blue like this, and I think there's a couple other variations. These are $119, I believe. And then this set is really cheap. These are like 50 bucks. And the difference with this one is that this one has a plate here for a high lift jack, and they actually sent me their high lift jack as well. First off, let's take a look at these things in the color, but this color is not very appealing. None of us want this bolted to the side of our truck. And uh, this one definitely has the cheapest look to it, the cheapest feel to it and the lugs are just they're like rounded and this is definitely like a just a molded cheap molded board it's got some mounting holes here and then it's of course like i said it has the high lift jack plate which is actually kind of a cool feature this is the higher end fiery off-road and these are actually pretty decent it doesn't have much going on on the bottom of it the way these have holes on the bottom it kind of reminds me of the old sand rails the sand tracks the aluminum ones people used to use but it doesn't have really any footing so for mud I'm not sure how well that'll do, but at the same time, it's kind of brilliant because when this gets sunk into the mud, it won't have a vacuum effect that even the Max tracks will have. Because whenever you try to pull one of these out of mud, it's sucked down because there's no air underneath it and it's like a suction cup. So we're not gonna have the option to test mud with these, but I thought I'd point that out. The bottom of the Max tracks have these lines and then it has these lugs, which again, mine are partially gone because I'm too nice sometimes so these have these lugs which will catch into pretty much everything and give it a little bit of footing whether your pressure is going vertically or horizontally when these are laid down if your tire is trying to kick it this way it has traction if it's trying to kick it the other way it has traction because of all these ribs so i think comparison of max tracks versus these max tracks clearly are the uh the winner there but max tracks are almost three times as much pretty close max tracks are 299 and these are about 119. Again, I paid full price for the Max Tracks. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with Vic Off-Road other than they sent me some traction boards to test out. These are relatively well built. These remind me of the ARB ones actually. I've never actually used those in person, but they do remind me quite a bit of the ARBs from the photos and stuff that I've seen of them. These look like they're gonna have a pretty good catch on that tire. I'm pretty confident the tire will be able to catch into these. Some of my concern is that this plastic piece is a secondary piece of plastic from the rest of the board so i'm kind of concerned those might rip out yeah because you can see that they're just pushed in here this set came with leashes the max tracks come with leashes that set did not come with a leash and basically the reason for the leash is that you attach it to the board because especially this time of the year on the sand dunes for instance it's had all summer to dry out underneath it so the sand is super super soft and it'll actually eject your traction board sometimes deep to where it's kind of hard to find it so you'll have a leash so you can just yank it out of there helps you keep track of them and it gives you kind of like a bobber to go find your traction board nobody's going to argue that max tracks are the best out there they are more expensive at 2.99 for this set they have the max tracks extremes that have aluminum lugs which aren't necessary for everybody but they might be necessary for idiots like me who help other people out while they're in perfect condition we're going to test these in the sand first and then we're going to go and we're going to see how well they work against rocks and other situations that you're gonna be carrying them for. I'm interested in how brittle these are. Will these break? And if they don't break on this test, this winter in Colorado, I'm gonna take them out and we're gonna try it again. If I'm gonna carry a set of boards, they need to work in every season and they need to work for multiple different things. I don't just want it to be able to get me out of sand or just get me out of mud, but maybe you just take a side-by-side -side to the sand dunes on the weekends and that's all the off-roading you do. So you'll have to judge off of that. They're all gonna take hits from this test as far as getting hurt a little bit, but we're gonna see how it goes. 
Okay, so here we are at the dunes. The sand's got some moisture under it, so they must have been getting a lot of rain here. There's a sand dune right there. I'm gonna go check that one out. That might be a good spot to try to sink this. You can tell that the sand is a little bit more red right there. It's a little bit damp, but I'm still able to get it stuck. So I'm just gonna, gonna I'm at a slight angle, which is gonna help. In most situations, if you're trying to get out of something like this, you're better off using gravity to roll backwards because if you're trying to climb out of a dune that's already slick, you got your weight working against you. So we're gonna try to recover backwards. So first, I'm gonna use the cheapest board. I'm gonna work my way through. I'm gonna dig all this out and I'm gonna use the recovery board itself as a shovel because most of them are basically expected at this point to be a shovel as well. So I'm going to start with the cheaper fiery red boards, using these as a shovel, and then digging myself out. The cheaper board gets a 0 out of 10 for attaching a GoPro to it. Always dig a little bit deeper than you think you're going to need to. Alright, nothing to it. So you can see right now these are flexing pretty good actually. They didn't crack in half so that's good. Not yet anyway. Let's just roll over once or twice more. No cracks, no breaks. These ones actually did pretty good. So now I'm gonna dig it out with these boards, same thing. Maybe a two out of 10 for cool camera angles. No cracks. There's stress lines on these. The black makes it easier to see. There probably is on those too. We'll do another test on that after we use the max tracks. I don't know if this board wasn't flexing as much, but this board does not have the flex line. Slam the brakes and sand will get it every time. Now I'm going to use the max tracks. I'd say a five out of ten. Very unnecessary commentary, but the Max Tracks is the best for mounting a GoPro too. As far as shoveling goes, they're all about the same as far as using them as a shovel. The Max Tracks does seem like it holds more because of the shape of it, but I might be imagining that. On camera, this doesn't look like much of an angle that I'm in, but I'm going against the front. The front is buried down as well. So those tires are pretty much inoperable. You're using your entire rear axle to get you out completely. So keep that in mind. Because just because I'm rolling downhill, if I were to take the boards out completely, it's not like I'm just gonna roll backwards. And they are flexing like crazy. Whoops. There's more of a hole than the others. Oh yeah, can't even. Oh, that'd be a good test to climb up the rut. Not getting up that. No stress lines. No cracks. Nothing to report. Okay, so there's too much of an incline with these ruts dug out. So we're going to use the traction boards to actually climb up. So uh, what I'm going to do is I will get dig this out a little bit more. So then I'll be in a rut and I'll try to climb out. So then we'll get a feel for how well these lugs really do trying to go up things because a lot of the time you're trying to go up things not necessarily just get yourself out backwards so that's what we'll do next and right here on this imprint i'll get a shot of this you can see that the max track and they've all been doing this but they're bowing down completely to kind of conform to the weight of the vehicle the inside this is why you want those different textures on the inside the max tracks has all these slots as well as the teeth as well as the round pieces so all that together 
is making this mold. So that's giving you traction to get out of things. Okay, so on this side, you can see its footprint and it, can, it contoured pretty well to the angle that I was driving up. And you can see that it has these high cliffs. It has some round spots. So all those holes are working as kind of a traction piece. And then it's got its teeth and stuff on the underside. So let's flip that and look at that again. Oh, so these teeth are not as big as they are on the max tracks, but that's got a pretty good footprint because all of these are wedging into the sand. And so that is doing pretty good. As far as this side, this board has pretty deep um, structures on the underside of it, but you can tell because of the high lift portion, it doesn't have as much of a footprint there in the center. And because of that, it doesn't catch quite as well. So I would say a th almost a third of that board doesn't have as, well, as good a traction. This one's actually kind of nice. This one having the handle back here, this is actually where you use the handle. It's where I hold the max tracks. So the handle's nice, but it makes this end weaker for sure. But the downside is this side only has one approach. So when I climb, I'll have to use this side. How often do you use it as a shovel? I personally don't carry, I carry a little tiny spade, but I don't carry a big shovel anymore. So I do rely on these as a shovel. So something to think about. That's pretty good, a little more steep. That's pretty nice. Whew. I drove, I drove about three and a half hours bought the gas and now I'm spending the day shoveling sand. So the next time you think about YouTubers, just get a bunch of free stuff. It's really not free, is it? Because YouTube does not pay that well. Spoiler alert. Probably like that, that way. The flex will happen right at the center. And that should be a pretty good stress test. That wasn't as hard as I expected. This one has damage. This one has damage. These have really bad fold lines now from where I was really digging into it. That's what I was trying to find out. So right here on the side and under here, there's a lot of stress. This one, same exact place. I dug those back out to where I've got a nice shelf, pretty vertical shelf. So we'll see how the black and blue fiery reds do with the pressure of the front of the vehicle. try that again I don't know if it was me or the boards but I couldn't get over like I could even with the pink ones they slid underneath the tires too fast it might be a sign that the bottoms are kind of slick these are showing big-time stress lines on the black, it makes it show up really, really well. So right there in the center where it's flexing, it's stressing them out, it's cracking the plastic. I can see it on the inside. I can't see it right here. Teeth on it seem to be holding up. So these did slip a little bit more than the pink ones did. And now I'll dig it back out and uh, we'll do the max tracks. I really hope the same thing doesn't happen to my max tracks since it's happening to these because again, I paid $300 for my max tracks. But we're gonna see what happens. That's the nature of the beast. There's no sign of any cracks or any stress lines at all on these. The flexibility of these, they can bend both like this when you're driving up them and then the entire board can flex and I was noticing that got me up 
the rest of that. The whole thing is just much more flexible and it's obvious. And there's no stress lines on either of them. What is that? Is that a crack? No, these are cracking a little bit on the inside, actually. On the bottom of the teeth here, there's a crack and a crack on both sides from where that flexed. But it's not all the way through. I'm gonna use the pink board as a high lift jack platform and then we'll go forward with that one. I wanna do that before it's destroyed because that one's gonna break in half. I'm pretty, pretty sure about that because now we're gonna be real mean to them and I'm gonna go up some rocky stuff because you don't always need these in soft stuff. Sometimes you need to build a bridge. So now we're gonna go do some bridging things. So anyway, the Max tracks are definitely holding up the best. I'm not excited about this part because I don't like high lift jacks at all. Vic Offroad sent me one with the pink board. So we're gonna try it out. When you have high lift jack points, it makes it a little safer to use it. But these, I would not consider safe at all. Oh, there it goes, okay. So that's a good example. So the foot sinks, if I try to lift it, it'll just keep sinking. So as you can see, get this as straight on as possible. I don't like being near these things. All right. Now, it's working as a surface area track. As you can see, it's flexing the board in half. I'm gonna stop right there just because it's just a demonstration, but I mean, it works. If you're in a mud pit or something, that would probably work relatively well. But because of how much we saw this board starting to crack, if you were on a wet area, wet mud, in a situation that you'd actually want to use this, I don't think that that would be very reliable because the jack might push through it. So I don't know how I feel about that. It's cool that it's there and in certain situations it's great, but these things are dangerous either way. So I don't know that I see this as necessary. I guess we could double it up. Yeah, so now the corners where the jack point was, all of that has stress fractures. It's not broken, but it's not good. So you're relying on plastic on all these corners to hold up this much weight. We've already proven that this one's a little weak. I don't think, I'm not into that. Real quick, we'll try double stacking these. People like to imagine plastics super weak, but modern plastics, even cheap modern plastics are incredibly strong. Two of them works great. It's not flexing hardly at all but now you don't have a board to put under a tire. One more test of just bridging these because bridging is an important part of a traction board. I wanna see how well it handles the weight and if that stress cracks it. And then after we do two boards, we'll do a single board and see if it breaks it in half. Okay, so I ended up finding some rocks from some of the old fire pits because there are three fire pits here for some unknown reason. I don't know if these are advertised to be used as a bridge, but again, I don't have any connection or any need for these. So I just wanna see if they're actually worth it because I think if you're gonna buy some in the first place, they need to do more than just one or two things. I'm gonna do it with two boards and then I'm gonna do it with one board. I just wanna see if it's possible and how much flex that these can take. Something I noticed right away with these ones, with the pink ones, is that they don't stack very well. They stick up pretty high. The Max tracks, they fit perfectly together. And then the blue and black ones, the fiery reds, those I'm not sure about. So we'll see in just a minute. So because since these ones don't stack correctly, they kind of got stuck together there, but it doesn't seem like it damaged anything. Oh, there are full on, looks like cracks developing on one of them, or two of them, right there on the edge. You can see some wear there. All right, let's give that a shot, because the only thing we're trying to do is to make sure at the highest point of stress that it won't break. The wood might fall down, but at least I'm not turning that rock into sand. Okay, actually not too bad. I expected, I really did expect this one to break. These are not cracking in half. They are bowed now. 
be stacked a little bit better. They're actually designed to stack. It's not totally flat though, there's a lot of space under there. They're still showing, I mean, obviously they have stress on the bottom, but I don't see any cracks. So they are weakened, but they're not broken. Is that the wood or is that the board? Oh, that was the board. So right on the center of the board, cracked right there. So these ones are now cracked. Damaged board right there. Hopefully you can see that. I wouldn't say that the board is totally done for. It would still have use if you were doing this and trying to get out of a situation. It would still be working for you. But now it's structure, I guess, is compromised. So I would imagine it would continue to crack. So as you can see, the mags tracks stack the best. There's like basically no space in between those. So that should make bridging more durable because now you're doubling up versus if you have a bunch of space in between the boards, that doesn't make any sense. It's not doing anything for you. On the max tracks, you have this raised round piece here. And then all of these are flat. These are on the bottom of all of these round pieces. So it's giving it strength across the entire structure. If I'm gonna break one, I'll do the one that has the skids from that guy that I helped, that I've been bitching about all day. See how that flexes? So I got a little bit of wear out of where that log was hitting, because that's new. That wasn't there before. It just bounces back. There's no stress marks at all. Some of these teeth on the max tracks are bent over. It's kind of surprising to me because it, that must have been from when I was bridging it. I can't see them bending otherwise. This too. This one's actually smashed in. That doesn't look, that's not melted. That's just caved in. That might have been from the log just now though. Yeah, because this has been in too. For this right here, wood came out on top. Those are from the logs. So as far as going up hard obstacles and stuff, if you're going up rocks, I would expect that. I would expect that these the plastic would take a hit from that. It's finally starting to rain, which I've been waiting for all day. So I'm gonna set the awning up and then I will finish my final thoughts on these things. To my surprise, these cheap ones actually held up better than the black and blue ones. They didn't retain their uh, shape, but all in all, if you're using these to get out of something, um, you know, they work. They held their own versus the black and blue one. I had the one that broke and the max tracks had a few little knobs get bent. These, I expected more out of these actually. I'm gonna keep using them uh, because it's just one crack. They should be able to stack together and do some stuff, but I'm interested in how they're gonna do in the cold. The lugs on this does leave something to be desired. These flat ones on the side seem to make up for it a little bit. These ones surprisingly cracked. I mean, I was abusing them, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I really was abusing them that bad because that's the kind of things you use these for. A situation that if you use your four wheel drive truck, you're gonna find yourself in, these aren't gonna hold up as well. On the flip side of that is if you break these and buy another set of them, you're still less than the cost of a set of Max Tracks. For me personally, the Max Tracks can't be replaced. These are the best on the market. I mean, anybody watching this video probably guessed ahead of time that the $50 or $60 and the $120 boards were not going to compete well with the Max Tracks. For my use, I think that I cannot replace Max Tracks with anything else. I don't think there's anything better at this point. I'm gonna buy another set for the next truck and then I'll carry two sets at any given time. I'm not saying that these are completely useless boards by any means. I just mean that they can't stand up to the tried and true Max Tracks. How often are you going to use them? Maybe for right now, you can get a cheap board set, and then in the future, if you actually find yourself using them, buy the Max Tracks. But if you are intending on using your truck to its full potential, you cannot go wrong with Max Tracks. So the Max Tracks are number one. Of course, these are actually the runner-up. They're just hideous. They're like they're like a pink flesh color. It's just a hideous thing. If it says orange, do not buy them. And then these ones, I mean, they did pretty good for the most part until I really 
stressed them out and wanted them to bend too much. So anyway, guys, that's what I have as far as the recovery board set goes. I will be doing another one soon with, uh, with snow on the ground. And so that should be an interesting one because it's gonna be harder all around. All right, guys, so that's the recovery board comparison test. And we're gonna do it again soon with snow on the ground. If you like this type of content, like and subscribe to the video. It really does help out. And until next time. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road, and overland-related content.